Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Today is Friday. Praise God. Now, all week we've been talking about covetousness and why you should get rid of it from your heart. Why? Because the rain is coming. God says, I'm sending the rain. And now the rain has started coming in. And God is going to increase you. God is going to bless you. But there is one thing that the Lord is sending me to tell you. Beware of this thing called covetousness. I'm seeing someone right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Your business is expanding beyond measure. Yes, you've been praying concerning this. I'm seeing a measure that is beyond your expectation coming to you so pay attention to this message i'm sharing with you pay attention to go listening from monday and, and ask yourself lord is there covetousness in my heart and pull it out carefully pull it out with understanding and don't let it sink in don't let it stay because your harvest time is coming praise god are you ready can we call for that daily bread first before we go into today's topic Say with me, Father, in faith, release your faith as you say this. Say, Father, I demand from you right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Doors are opening for you you never imagined by this time. You will have access to those doors. There is, see, there is, there is nothing that uh, God has nothing against you being prosperous. God has nothing against you becoming wealthy. Nothing against you. He wants to lavishly give you all things. But you see, the problem is this thing called covetousness. It takes a hold of your heart and then it causes you to walk against the will of God. There are, there are people that God have blessed. You know God blessed them. But then they feel to, to sustain this blessing or wealth, they need to make certain alliances. And then they step out of the will of God for their lives because they want to maintain what they have, covetousness. Covetousness. You know, Jesus gave that story, Luke chapter 12, about the rich man that, that his, his band was full. His harvest was great. And what did he say? He said, ah, what do I do? I have so great a harvest. I know what to do. I'm going to tear down this band. And then I'm going, to, um, I'm going to build a bigger one. Then by the time I build that bigger band, and then I'm going to say to my, I stop all this harvest. Then I'm going to say to my soul, relax, so you've got enough stored up for many years. Enjoy your life. Eat and drink and enjoy your life. And Jesus called him a fool because God spoke and said, Oh fool, tonight I'm requiring your soul. Then let me see what all... Oh, there are times we have thoughts in our hearts like that. I'm going to gather enough money then I'm going to rest. No, sir, don't rest until God said you should rest. I'm going to retire by next year. But before I retire, I want to gather all this money. If God is telling you to retire, retire. It's not the abundance of things you have gathered that will make you retire. No, sir. Because you, you can amass all those things. And God will speak to you and say, son, I want all those things. Now, in this case, God says, I'm demanding your life. I pray God doesn't demand your life. If I pray, he demands those things from you. It's easier that way. What do you think? See, he says, you can't give out everything. And then he said, oh, mm, how do I start? Nah, let me, I have to go back. I came out of retirement. I have to go back now. Nah. You see, I pray you understand this. Because this has become a limitation to many. It has stopped people from entering into God's way, God's best for their lives. Covetousness. I told you, the seed, the good seed and the terrors will grow together. So also the blessing of God with covetousness will grow together if you don't watch it. 
it will affect the time, the season of your harvest. The season of your harvest is not when to have more money. The season of your harvest is when to move your money to the right place. So when you come now, you're rich, but God is ready to give you true riches. The same thing that happened to Job. You know, many people have this control. I've, I've shared on this many times if you've been following me on this broadcast. Job's problem was not that he wasn't a good man. Job's problem was not that he wasn't a, a righteous man. Job's problem, you know, many people say Job's problem was his confession. No, it wasn't his confession. Job's problem was simply covetousness. The day that God came to test Job because God wanted to release him into life, covetousness stood in the way. And, but for Job, he had to learn the hard way. He learned the hard way. Why? Now, picture this. God had blessed Job. Job got blessed by the revelations of God in his heart. Just like the rich young ruler we talked about uh, for, for a few days now. That came to meet Jesus. That's the New Testament kind of Job. Okay? So, Job had all his wealth and he had kept the laws of God all the days of his life. I mean, he, he said it. He says, when I was much younger, the tabernacles of God was in my, uh, well, the, the wisdom of God was in my tabernacles. The secrets of God was in my tabernacles. So I carried the secrets of God. Do you know what it is to carry the secret of God? You don't stumble into it. You, you acquire it by constant fellowship and learning from God. So Job said, I carried the secrets of God in my tabernacle. So Job was telling us how he became rich and wealthy. He carried some secrets of God. Just like God has helped a lot of people even today. By the wisdom of God, they know when to invest. Other people have said, don't, don't, don't. That's when they invest. And by the time it turns out, everybody's wondering, man, you, you had foresight. Somebody must have hinted. He said, nobody hinted me. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost hinted me. Not because he cannot do it for a lot of us, but because it's difficult for many to have faith in him. Yeah. It doesn't take him anything to turn you a billionaire overnight. That's not God's problem one bit. The problem is when that thing comes in, you know, people say, oh, God, God can give you money, but don't let money have you. That's kind of covetousness, you know. Now, now, some people don't even realize that even now that they have nothing, the covetousness is still working in them. That's even more dangerous. See, because covetousness will now limit you from growing. It will limit you from having. Because you've not even started your journey. You're covetous already. Man, this guy. How are you covetous when you're broke? The reason I cannot go there is because I don't have money. Now, if I had gotten that job that I was looking for last month, by now, I should have had enough money to go there. What is that? Covetousness. You are thinking the reason you're poor is because you don't have that thing you think you should have gotten. It's covetousness. You're broke, yet covetous. See? Oh, uh, sorry, sir. I can't, I can't come for that program. Why? When is the program? Next week, I can't come for the work. Why can't you come for the work? No, I don't have a job. If I had a job now, at least I would have had money. Then I would have come for the meeting. See? What are you saying? You're clearly speaking covetousness. You are. And that will stop you from rising. You see, you've not, it's better you start the journey and we now find out that covetousness. <laughs> they will not start looking out to extract. Than this one, you've not even started the journey and covetousness is already wrapped around you. Broke, yet covetous. How dangerous that can be for you. It's something you need to cleanse your mind from. And I told you yesterday, how do you cleanse your mind from it? He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So that you will boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what any man can do to me. And that's one thing you must meditate on day 
and night meditate on it he is with me he is with me so if he is with me i should not be saying what i cannot do by next week if he is with me i should not be saying i cannot afford this thing by tomorrow if he is with me what am i supposed to do okay lord how do i afford this thing by tomorrow and and god wants you to begin to walk into that consciousness that he is with you if that rich young ruler had known this it would have been so easy for him to obey what jesus told him to do so if you if you sell everything you have given to the book how will you rise okay, but god is with me he'll tell me what to do i told you that was job's problem now god had blessed job just like this rich young ruler and then one day you see i'll share this with you <laughs> thank you holy spirit if you've read the book of joshua in describing what happened what transpired before god commanded abraham to sacrifice isaac you will find out that uh, ishmael had come to visit isaac okay and while they were conversing, Ishmael made a boasting and said, Hey, our father obeys God in everything. And do you know I was 13 years old when God told our father to circumcise and he circumcised me as a 13 year old boy. Man, it was painful, but I, 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 we had to all go through it. So man, I carry a mark. He was boasting about it. And then Isaac said something to him. Isaac said, I, I know my father, that even if God tells him to sacrifice me as his son, I know he will do it. And if he does it, I will not argue with him. I'll submit myself to him. Now, that's what's written in the book of Joshua. And God heard it. Two boys were conversing and God heard it. And not only did God hear it, Satan heard it. <laughs> God. Yeah, Satan heard it. Mm. Mm. And Satan went before the Lord. Just like he did in the case of Job. Now, you see, that's why reading is very important because it, 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 it collaborates stories and then you begin to understand, oh, this is how these things work. So, these two boys were conversing and God heard it and Satan heard it. And then Satan shows up before the Lord. And where are you coming from? From walking to and fro. Okay, so what have you said? He said, this is your friend Abraham. Satan brought an accusation against Abraham. He said, have you noticed that since you gave him this son, he has not sacrificed anything again to you. He has gotten what he wants, so he's done with you. And God says, no, I know Abraham. Satan said, no. Ask him for a sacrifice and see what he would do. I said, okay. Ask him for the sacrifice of his son. He will curse you to his face. And God said, okay. Okay. Let me try Abraham. Abraham, yes sir. Give me your son. Your only son. And like I told you, I said, God had the conversation between Isaac and, and, and Ishmael. Now, that will make you understand the story of Job. So, not because God just sat there in heaven and Satan came and said, God, you're still your servant Job. I've looked at him. Oh, mm -mm, I think he's following you. He's not real. He's fake. No. There were things that had transpired in Job's life. Job had been mightily blessed by God. But hey, there was something God wanted to do with his life. There was more than what he had. And what's that God wanted Job to have life through riches. And God says, but for you to get true riches, you must be tested for covetousness. That's the principle. I'll say that again. For you to enter into true riches, 
you must be tested for covetousness. So God came to Job and said, Job, you know, you're so blessed. Yeah, Lord, you have blessed me. I want you to give out everything you have. Yeah, I want you to give out everything you have. And that was so difficult for Job. Now, what was God's intention? God wanted to bless him with true riches, which is life. And Job began to struggle with it and struggle with it and struggle. And God was watching and waiting. But Job was taking a long time to decide on that. Now, while Job was struggling with that, why was he struggling? Because fear came in and that's one thing covetousness does. It produces fear in you. So, Job considered what God had said and the fear of losing everything came into his heart because of covetousness. True story I'm telling you. And so he couldn't make that decision. So, Satan went before the Lord and the Lord said, Hey, have you considered my servant Job? Now, because Job refused to willingly do it, God was still going to test him for covetousness. Because remember, God, God had boasted about Job, right? The same way he boasted about Abraham. Remember, God had said, I knew him. So God boasted about Job also. So God was the one that said to the devil, have you considered my servant Job? What do you think God will consider Job for? Have you thought about it? I mean, you're asking him, you're asking the devil that you know, have you considered this person? Consider him for what? Not to bless him. So God actually introduced Job to Satan for that temptation. But the question you need to ask is what was on God's mind? I'll tell you what was on his mind. He wanted to check Job for covetousness. And if it is there, remove it so he could bless him. But Job proved that there was covetousness in his heart. So he struggled and struggled until when Satan took, God gave permission to Satan to take out everything he had. He took out everything. Then Job came to the ground. And when Job came to, because see, I want you to understand something. The fact that there was covetousness in his heart didn't mean that that covetousness had root in him. So that's how God tests. Give up. Uh, okay, take it out. Let me see what he will do. If there's covetousness in his heart, you will hear it in his confessions. So God cleared out everything that Job had and was waiting to hear what Job was going to say. And his statements proved that this covetousness was not rooted in his heart. It was just on the surface. Because Job would never deny God. To the extent, he said, shall we expect good from God and not expect evil? Now, I know you can read that in the wrong light, but it expresses something in his heart. That was not wrong. The, the communication might be wrong, but the intent, what was on his heart, what, was, what he was communicating was not wrong. He said, if God can bless me with evil, then why should I cry? When I don't have good. If God can bless me with good, sorry. Why should I cry when I see an evil? And he knew it came from the Lord. He knew. Ah, no, it didn't come from the Lord. It came from the devil. Hey, hey, hey. Don't, don't defend God. God said to Satan, have you considered Job? That thing came from the Lord. Yeah. God will not beat you. Say the truth. <laughs> Think the truth. Praise God. So, but here's the point, and you need to understand this. In, at the end of the day, Job's confessions proved God right. Remember, he said, even though he slayed me, I will still wait for him. What do you think he was saying? 
I'm not he was giving the usher, why don't you curse God and die? He said, no, never. I won't do that. What's that? There was no, there's no covetousness. Here. He came to ground zero to realize that. But he didn't need to. If he had just known that from the beginning. Now that's what he was telling us. As wealth is coming. As good things are coming. Beware that covetousness does not entangle you in it. For the season of testing will come. And when that season comes, where will you stand? And when God was done with the testing of Job, what did God do next? He blessed Job with true wealth. Yeah, he blessed him with true wealth, true riches. And that's life. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up. Praise God. Woo! Glory to Jesus. Did you get anything from this teaching? I believe so. Can I pray for you? Father, I ask, you know our callings. You know everything that you have ordained for our lives. Right now, Lord, open the gates. We have heard your word. We have believed you. Let the rain begin to fall now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Have a wonderful weekend. Actually the best weekend you have ever experienced. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.